Well, I got the collection in about 2016. It was a pretty large investment. It was about 10 grand. So I had to buy a lot of materials, everything from fire extinguishers to uh, this scanner here. So this is Shimokin 1908. And you can see these are all guys from World War I and II. These are negatives that I scanned already. Over the years, they came in cardboard boxes. Well, I started at the news item. Uh, this will be my 16th year, so late 2008. The most of the collection I got in 2016. I graduated from Shimokin in 2000. So I was in college and the last owner of the studio, Ben, put an ad. He was interested in selling the building. Uh, this, this studio was uh, next to YP. It's where all of our uh, cigar lounges now. Uh, but even then I knew what to ask for if he had any photos of the Vicky and FNS Brewery, you know. I, I don't think he trusted a lot of people. I would say, hey Ben, do you have any photos of the Vicky? And it was kind of organized chaos because, ah, I don't know. I, uh, so I would, I would purchase some photos, maybe $100 worth. You know, for me, that's a lot of money. You know, two jobs. Uh, the next time I'd go back, he, he got to know me a little better. And he, guess what I found, Larry? Those, uh, those Vicky photos. The reason he put the ad out is he wanted to sell the building. In about 06, the Thurman County Historical Society purchased the whole collection. So that was not only the photos that uh, Thomas Photography took, but also the Shemokin Citizen. About 2015, I, I approached a the members in a county historical society which had the collection mostly in her basement uh, i made them an offer for all the negatives that are called safety films so about 1943 on kodak actually came out they used to use silver nitrate and they actually came out somewhere in the 40s i believe what they actually called it safety film it's actually on their negative uh, because it was safer to handle everyone always asks me how many there are in the collection and it's it's hard to tell uh, but i always say scannable negatives meaning Scanning one, not three duplicates. I would say about 80,000. And I'm about 32,500 now. When I bought the collection, I also had to buy a lot of materials. Everything from fire extinguishers to uh, this scanner here. It's an Epson V800. Uh, it can scan up to 24 DPI. Anyhow, so I'll, I'll turn this on. This is the noise I've heard for the past nine years. Let me open up this box and see what we have. District Band 1964, Trevenant, which I'm assuming is a class from 1961, and a lawyers from 1965. So inside this box are all individual negatives. Now, some of these aren't in the best condition. When I got them, they had spots of mold in it. This is 1961 Trevenant High School. So you could see there's some debris on it. So before I would scan it, I would try to clean this up as best as possible. And then because this is larger than my scanner that's, that can fit an eight by 10 negative, I would scan this in two or three different sections and then merge them together in Photoshop. So you could see 1961 Trevenant High School. Now there's no photography mark. Sometimes Paul Thomas would put his watermark on the corners. Along with the collection came uh, a document system in some form. So we'll open up one of these boxes. So obviously last name WE through Z. When someone would order a photo, so I'll just pull this random one out. Uh, so this would be uh, Mr. and Mrs. Weaver their address, what they ordered, and the date. So they ordered something on May 2nd, 1963. So what happens in the corresponding negatives, you'll see in one of the corners a last name and the order number. And that's that's how I can go downstairs then and actually find out when they ordered it. So each one of these I'll scan. I, would, I don't scan every single one because just like a modern day photographer, they'll take two or three different photos. Uh, uh, but I'll scan probably an average 120 or 130 in each box. These prints here I got before I purchased a collection from the North Thurman County Historical Society. So I got them from Ben, who was the last owner. So these aren't, these aren't taken from a negative. There are negatives. So this one's from Shemokin. This is 1908. There's no date on it, but I have found the date through another source. You can actually see Thomas's watermark. I'll call it a watermark. It's not a true watermark, but uh, signature, I guess. You can actually see his name, Thomas Photo. So this is Shemokin. 1908. So this would be Raspberry Hill. Yep, there's the cemetery. So this would be Bear Valley Avenue coming down Market Street. People always ask when they see this, what's this building here? Well, that's the old Lincoln grade school that was eventually raised. So that's where Lincoln Towers is now. That's how that got that name. So this is Glenburn. You can see there's not a lot of coal. That's how early a photo this is. Glenburn Colliery and there's some coal. There's really not any coal up here yet. So this here would be Third Street. So he, he went up to a, a few houses there up on a hill and this shot straight down. Oh, wow. Lemburn Colliery and Cole Township High School would eventually be built up here. And then the Schmokin High School is further off to the west. So he said 1908. 
Here's one of these that I was just referring to, the negatives. This one is Academy Grade School, 1932. I'm not sure if Paul took this or Myron, probably Myron, because it's 1921. Uh, the interesting one about this, this is a hardware company in Shimoka, and they had some kind of outing, and he used a certain camera. If you noticed, the three guys here on the left are the same three guys on the right. So what happened is he would pan the camera to take this photo. So when he, and he could still do this with modern day cameras, don't, you know, not with Photoshop. We can actually do this with a long exposure. The second the camera panned to the right, these guys snuck behind everybody and got in over here on the other side. <laughs> I'm not, uh, yeah, so, and you can actually see, I think they came from left to right because they're snickering over here more than they are to yeah, the left. Yeah. So some of the larger negatives came in these type of boxes. So this is Veterans of World War I and II from Ralph Township, 1946. Wow. So I'm going to roll this out as carefully as I can. And you can see these are all guys from World War I and II from 1946. Wow. I, it took me about 24 hours at best a couple of years ago. Now, I had to do this one on top of the other because not many places will do prints that are this long. But this is what the final product turn out the band. That's about 24 hours of, of labor wow. to get it to that point. So a lot of things, I, I had to recreate some areas. Okay. So I went in here into a very, what was a micro level, I guess you could say. Like it, I, it, it's hard to like the train tracks was the hardest or this whole section was missing. There were holes missing. So I had to almost like an artist would use with a brush. Gotcha. You, you, don't, you don't try to change the original yeah, photo, yeah. but you have to get it to a point where it looks it looks decent. That's what it originally looked like. Now, this is this only piece of it because the rest of it just fell into pieces. Wow. So you can see the, it looks like a hopper, some coal carts, but even the little pieces I tried to keep in there as, as much as original as I could, and then I would fill in these gaps. These are negatives that I also have to scan. Some of them have been scanned, so they give me an idea. It's, it's hard to tell, but that's a dance. Uh, also, what's in this collection is everybody's headshots, not only from Shemokin, but a few years of Lords. So what else is in this collection is the negatives from the Shemokin Citizen. So the Shemokin Citizen was a weekly newspaper. It was actually owned by the Shoyer family who operated the dress company until 1940, excuse me, 1984 on Bunker Hill. So you see everything from sports to fires, community events. I'm trying to figure out a way we can... You know, maybe we can take this one downstairs. I might have scanned this one already. Uh, I would scotch tape this and then go in Photoshop and take it out. Okay. That's how I scan these. Sure. So, wow. like, so that's how different are. Some are rolled, some aren't. Right. But the problem with that, you know, when you have an eight by ten scan scanner, it's like about four scan scans in so here. Much. Yeah. And then you have to merge them together that's in Photoshop, good. and at the same time, make sure you don't damage the negative. Sure. The, my original website, they closed that uh, company, so I went with uh, Smug Mug. I, I was okay with it being called Smug Mug, but I felt uh, it should be named something a little better. So when I was in high school, my first car was a 1988 Chevy Cavalier. But my vanity plate was my initials and my birthday. So LED 0201. But the way the, the, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation gave me the plate was LED 0201. They just thought it was a continuation of of the letters. So my friends, God love them, they would see me coming in this red 88 Cavalier and say, oh, here comes the Lado. When I had to give up that first car, uh, the vanity plate went with it and I couldn't keep it because it wasn't my car. So I asked my friend, should I just get a regular license plate or what should I do? And he go, why don't you call it the Lado? I go, well, that's what's called already. He go, no, why don't you call it D-A-L-A-D-O? So it's a morph of my initials and my birthday. My site consists of some of my personal photos, but also one gigantic folder that says old photographs of the region. And that's where every single Tom's photo and Schmoke and Citizen photo and photos that have gone over the years from other uh, avenues have gone. So the first album is your general new arrivals. Anything I just scanned generally in the past two or three months. People I want people to see, you know, probably 4,000 headshots of veterans that came through Tom's Photographer Studio. Some of these guys came in there, they, they came in a studio and system in front of a camera and then they went off and served and came back. Some of them uh, had their wife and their, their child with them. And unfortunately there was a few that say uh, on their order card for the VFW 
And those are people who came in and then come back. And there's hundreds, a couple hundred photos of people coming in there, having their photo taken before they, they went overseas. And that was the last time Shemokin might have seen them. But once in a while, you stop dead in your tracks. You know, when you're scanning and they got a guy who went in the studio and uh, maybe three months later, he got killed. One example is uh, Robert Kemp. Uh, our same's named after Robert Kemp. Uh, a lot of people forget that was the first Shemokin graduate killed in World War II. He came in there one day in the studio and a couple of years later, he, he didn't come home. So in mining, Shepton, Shepton Mine Rescue, when they rescued a, a, a few people who were trapped in an underground mine in Shepton. Shepton is in, uh, you know, going toward Hazleton. So it's like, well, what, what's this box? You know, what, like, it's, it's kind of out of place. It's not Schmokin High School. And it was 182 negatives from the Shepton Mine Rescue, which happened in August 1963, that got national attention when uh, one miner was killed, but they saved uh, two others that were trapped underneath a mine. Everything from the rescue, you know, to the national media showing up to the families, hoping and praying, you know, with Bibles, hoping that their family members are, are saved. I was just saying how I admire the search function of your website, how thorough it is. And whether it's by the name, the year, the region, the event, you get a multiple choice and, and that's why it's important when you have that many negatives or excuse me i, I guess it's all digital photos at this point on a website you need to find a way that a, a member of the public can easily find something they're looking for so that smug mug already has that built in that search feature now not every negative has a name there are a couple that i have an album that's called unknown so what i did is after i'd scan a whole year of smoking citizens and I'd go down to the Thumberland County Historical Society and flip through every single page of that year. I'll give you an example. This photo here is obviously of kids on the Soldiers and Sailors Monument along Lincoln Street in Shemoke. Well, I knew what year it was, but who, who are these people and why are they cleaning it? So what I did is, you know, going down and I had about 160 to try to find, I found it. So I took a photo of the caption and I was able to tell readers through my website that it's members of the Shemokin High School Key Club that are cleaning the, the soldiers and sailors. And I, it actually says the name of the advisor on there. So I put that information in underneath the digital photo on my website. And I do that with every single photo I could possibly find that I've scanned from the Schmokin citizens. Because they felt that was important for people to find those photos. Every single page for about 14 years so far I've gone through. Wow. There's a number of historic photos I, I just feel are unique. People running for office at the national level that visited the area. Photos of uh, John F. Kennedy in Hazleton in 1960, uh, giving a speech. Thousands upon thousands of people lined up to listen. And then unfortunately in that same album, it was about four years later of the good people Shemokin dedicating a monument, acknowledging he was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. There's also uh, a photo of uh, Lyndon Johnson in Shemokin. There was a woman who contacted me a couple of years ago and she was visiting a relative who was actually buried overseas. He was killed in World War II. She was bringing sand over from France to sprinkle on the graves of uh, his parents who were buried at St. Ed's. And there was a photo of, he came in Thomas' studio and she's never had the photo before in her life. Never seen it. She never even had a photo. I think it was uh, her grandfather, possibly. Uh, but she never had a photo of him before. I sent that to her immediately. Like, you could never charge anyone for a photo like that. Uh, but if someone would ever contact me and said that's her grandfather, great-grandfather, I could never charge anyone for that. All right, so this is a box I'm currently working on. This is a box of sittings, people coming in the Paul Thomas studio and having their photo taken. I'll put two in at a time. So I decided to scan these at 700 DPI. So first thing I'll do, I'll take out the color. And then you have to duplicate it because there's obviously two different photos here. So we'll just start from the top one. So what I've learned over the years is that order number, order number up top. So the image would actually be reversed right now. If I can read it, 96413 and Zarek, the negative is actually reversed right now. So what I'll do, I'll reverse the image. I'll flip it horizontally. Then I'll crop it. And then I'll look at a negative here. Well, it's a digital photo now. And if I see something that stands out, these white dots, I will actually go in and take them out. Now you can't take out every speck of dust and every crack, but if I see something that's distracting, I'm gonna go in there and remove it. So 
especially around the face. Why oh, so now I've done that. Time to save it. I'll name it after the guy's last name, which corresponds right up top, Zarek. Now there's already Zarek in there. So I'll save that. Open it up to show you here the final product. And we just went from uh, a negative to a digital copy. And do that about 32,000 more times. <laughs> so confirm the oldest photos. I have three photos that are from 1887. There's one of the current location of OIP, which would make sense because that's where Thomas had his studio. This is what this donated for Schmoke and Coltansha Public Library. Uh, this is from 1889 of uh, Garfield Grade School. And from what I gather, uh, there was either there was some kind of administrator at some point, him or his family, donated a batch of photos from the Garfield Grade School. That was a great school in Shemokin. You know, I appreciate the support from everyone over the years, especially when I first start, got the collection. It was a big financial risk. If anyone has any questions, my email's on the website. Uh, more than happy to talk to you if you find a photo of, of a relative or, or something connected to your family. Or maybe if you're buying a building and it's, there's an old photo, more than happy to talk to you about it. These photos belong out in the public. Uh, they're not for me, they're for the public. Uh, I want people to see them. Uh, there's people of families and businesses and, and events, historical events.